Is the Lightbringer actually worth it? That's what we're going to have a look at today. The new Tier 7 Halloween tank. But before we get into that, let's have a look at the regular shop. All the other vehicles that you can buy right here. Now, Iron Predator is what we have here. Air Mix, AP30 and the Charlemagne, 13,500. Obviously, the price is very bad. And both of those vehicles are perfectly fine. Now, these are the types of vehicles that you don't need to have in your garage. If you don't have them, you're not missing out on anything. But if you're a tank collector, they are good enough to warrant purchasing them at a decent price, which is what they're not at. Now, the MX-30, 218 penetration, 230 alpha damage right here, 10 degrees of gun depression, very good mobility. So this thing just works, especially if you're a better player. Uh, this can be a vehicle that is worth picking up. Now, the Charlemagne, it's got great turret armor. It doesn't really have a lot of DPM, but it does have Hesh rounds as premium with 470 alpha damage and 158 pen. So it is a special vehicle there. If you're into that, if you like the new tier 10 Chieftain, this could also be a vehicle worth picking up here at tier 8. However, obviously it does lack real premium ammo, so you're going to need to be a good player to purchase this vehicle and also play it well. But 13.5k, not a good price here. I don't recommend it. What I do recommend, though, is these two. Because unlike something like the Charlemagne, the Tornwagen and the Type are both good. And they're also relatively easy and beginner friendly. So I definitely recommend this bundle. The Type as well, 430 alpha damage, 1.7k DPM. That's the biggest downs of this vehicle. It's very lacking DPM. But the armor is very good. Obviously, the low plate is a weak spot. Third armor is quite good. The cupola is very small and at the back of the tank. So it's going to be fine. Dispersion isn't great, so you want to play this vehicle up close and personal. But you have 9 degrees of gun depression. And the Tottenwagen is somewhat similar to that. Similarly low DPM, very excellent turret armor. It's basically impossible to penetrate that if you barely even hit it. Because look, look at the size of the turret. You can barely even hit it with most tanks. Especially not with the Type 57 with its awful accuracy. But this vehicle also got decent penetration. Got 400 alpha damage. It's got point. 3-4 dispersion, it's got 10 degrees of gun depression, low plates a weak spot like it is on any other vehicle, and the mobility of this one and the type is heavy type vehicle, so it's not fast, but it's not mouse level either, so both work, both are relatively easy to play, and uh, for this price I can definitely recommend both of them. Then, I mean, it's a tier 6, it's like, you, 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 either you collect them or you don't. If you want to collect them, you get them. If you want to not collect them, don't get them, because otherwise for earning creds or anything of that sort, they're a waste of time. Chromably can be very funny, uh, can play very well, but generally these aren't tanks that you actually want to have. Just like the uh, Chaffee Chua, which it's fine if you're a really good player. Otherwise, stay away from it. 5A, I don't think I have to say anything. Those are terrible. And uh, the Iron Companions as well down here, not a great pickup whatsoever. Just uh, stay away from that generally. And then... We have still the Kennedy one, which is a good pickup. I mean, 15,000 gold could be better. The times fives are locked. There is no things like boosters in here. So the bundle price is pretty bad, but the vehicle in it is a very good tank. It's got the three short auto loader with 350 alpha damage, so 1,050 in the clip. Seven degrees of depression, which is very nice for a Soviet vehicle. So this is a tank that I can recommend together with a Object 752, but unfortunately, this is quite expensive because here, $23.99, that is the same price as you get for these two vehicles up here. And I personally would definitely recommend this one because, I mean, it's 24 euros for two very good tanks. So go for it. Or it's like $26, $27 or something. But that is still going to be a, a good price for it anyway. And uh, yeah, I, I don't appreciate these vehicles whatsoever. They're the same price as well, but would rather have two good tier 8 vehicles would well, Reggie have that? Yeah, I wouldn't want that. So, stay away from that. The thing I recommend most is the Steel Monsters. And now, we're going to have a look at the Halloween tank. Here's the new event, and every second tier is locked behind the, the event mission pass, which is very terrible. So, you basically can't even complete... Like, you basically have to play these stages without being able to claim the reward, which is the dumbest thing ever. Like, you claim the first one, because this is free, Lantern Booster, and now you have to unlock the second level here, but you can't claim the reward unless you pay money. What the hell is this? I mean, the majority of the rewards in this event aren't even worth anything. I mean, you have a couple of times three boosters here that have a little bit of value, but the rest is just camos and stupid attachments and collectibles that do have some trade-in value of 3,753 XP here, but 
the large majority of the, the things in this event have no tangible value whatsoever unless you really like Halloween camouflages, which... Yeah, there's also crates in here, um, the Wicked Souls container that could, could contain a Soul Eater. I mean, th there's a 0.5%, 0.5% drop chance. Normally it's 5%, but there's a 0.5% drop chance for the Soul Eater. So, um, 0.5. That's all I'm gonna, like, what is this crap? We can already see that Wargaming is continuing down the path of prioritizing aesthetics over playability, which in the long term is very bad for the game, because the vehicle with this armor profile is not very fun to play against. So, not a fan. It's a cool design, but obviously playability is always more important than aesthetics, and in this case, that's just not given. But, 2000 DPM, 170 penetration, 270 alpha damage, 4 seconds aim time, very good dispersion for a heavy tank. It's only got 6 degrees of gun depression, which is going to be somewhat limited. The average speed is 31 and the power to weight ratio is 16, so it is a above average uh, heavy tank in terms of its mobility, which is very nice, but generally the gun isn't anything special. Well, I'd assess the armor as fair. Lower plate is a weak spot, 140mm, 200mm. That's the, pr let's see, that's the problem with this vehicle, because that's very many bent and built plates where you're gonna get random ricochets that just don't make sense so watch out for that but generally this vehicle has 170 penetration it can pen its own front plate so there's that obviously the plate up here is also gonna only be 100 millimeters and can be penned very easily you should avoid this one because it's very well angled backwards but if you're firing at the vehicle if you're face hugging it this place is 100 millimeter easy pen lower plate easy pen right here the turret there's only 81 millimeters here, but it is sort of this uh, Leopard 2 style slope where it goes up at the top, down at the bottom, so the armor is going to be very thick at that plate. However, that kind of gets ruined by the orange plate here being completely flat. So whenever you're firing at this vehicle from the front, you can pen around the gun here, 180 millimeters right here. So not really great either, but this thing again lives from its funky angles rather than from its thickness. But the sides is surprisingly flat. It does have the side skirt here. So you're going to be fine somewhat side scraping a little bit. Uh, but generally, you don't want to turn it too far because as soon as you turn it about 25 degrees, then you're going to have a bit of a problem. You're going to get penned very easily. Now, it only has 6 degrees of gun depression, so you can't really play to the advantage of the turret either. And here's another problem. Because of the plate being angled downwards, if you depress the gun, that plate is going to get weaker as the further you turn it down. So you're just creating your own weak spot by using the gun depression, which isn't really that nice either. So basically, I would rate the armor profile of this thing. If you have aim, you can easily pen it. If you're a bot, you're gonna struggle. Basically, it's a noob repellent type of armor. Otherwise, everybody with a decent amount of accuracy and aim is gonna pen this thing everywhere. And here we go with the Lightbringer and the, well, all the animation budget went into that opening sequence rather than balancing the stats properly. So let's see what we're gonna do here. Obviously, it does have quite good mobility for a heavy tank as already talked about. So we're obviously gonna go on to the medium side here of whatever this map's called, Faust, I think. So let's see what we're gonna be able to achieve over there. Obviously, I wanna be careful somewhat. This is a tier seven battle. As you're gonna notice, by the way, whenever you play a new tank, there's a very, very high likelihood that you're gonna be top tier for the first battle ever that you play in that vehicle, and that is deliberate in terms of the matchmaking algorithm, so keep that in mind. Uh, let's see what we're gonna do. Uh, there's a boogie over there. Probably gonna go down. Most of the enemy team is on the heavy side, which is a good thing for me, because that means they're somewhat subpar. Um, it does, it's not necessarily true that players that go to the heavy side are worse than the players that go to the medium side, but most of the time, players on the heavy side are less effective and less good at winning. So, there's that. Alright, I'm gonna take out the boogie here, and now the silencer has a two-shot autoloader, so I wanna not take shells from that. The HE pen on this thing isn't very good, as you can see right there. And I'm just gonna ram into this dude. Very nice there, because you have that spike at the front. This vehicle is gonna be very excellent at ramming, so keep that in mind. While the gun might not be great, it does have that spiked plate at the front, so ramming into stuff is going to be very nice with this vehicle. Um, definitely do that. Just going to go over there because there's nothing really going on on this side. Obviously the Helsing and the, the other guy are going down. And now we're just going to press a W here, and basically nothing's going to happen. 
Yes. Is this vehicle worth 100 euros or whatever it's going to cost? No. If you can't get it for free, absolutely go for it. It can be a very fun vehicle. Um, but definitely do not purchase this vehicle. Because obviously, I'm recording this before I know how this vehicle is actually getting released. So, let's see if I'm going to do Hellcat's coming up. That's going to be some free damage right here. If I have the gun depression, 6 degrees obviously is not very nice by any means. And uh, that's quite disappointing. I'm going to go for the ram again. Very nice. Now another shot into the Lycan. That doesn't go anywhere. Track them though. So I should be able to get another shot anyway. He's just staring at me. So there we go. Four kills. No damage. But that's the tank. Alright, let's play another battle with this vehicle. And as already established, uh, if it's free, get it. If you have to pay for it, don't. Because it doesn't have any inherent value except that nice little light beam at the start. Again, one can only wonder what is more important. Aesthetics or gameplay? I would argue that the gameplay aspect is much more important. Because obviously if you look at a vehicle, then uh, you, you look at it and it... Oh, look, it looks nice. But if you then have to play it for 100 battles, you kind of want it to be good. Right, so aesthetics don't really matter when you're trying to have fun in the game. Because a camo doesn't win you battles. So in that case, unless you don't care about winning battles, then go for the aesthetics. But again, if the vehicle's free, it's perfectly fine. Uh, you, you can go for it, take it. Uh, but if you have to pay for something like this, I personally wouldn't. So, let's see. Obviously, you still see a, a lengthy event um, that you have to go through. Then obviously, watch out whether the time that you invest is actually worth it. The tiger is a very interesting suspect over there. I'm just gonna have a shot at him. Lower plate or not. Don't you just love when you aim at a vehicle and then the very last second that you aim at them, they turn. That's actually a very good thing. I don't think that was intentional there from the tiger, but if you know roughly what the enemy's aim time is and you move right as you anticipate for them to shoot, you can actually throw off their aim quite a lot. So I definitely recommend doing that. I also don't recommend having a shit team like this one, um, because then you're gonna get shot at from the side by medium tanks that were not stopped by the incompetent mediums on your team. So, obviously the Helsing over there, too short, already know that. Um, nothing outstanding, nothing surprising. See so the Lycan is up there, so I'm gonna have to wait on this angle and fight these guys based on this rock. Obviously I want to direct them into the Lycan so that I can... Uh, retain my hit points uh, because obviously the Lycan has more armor and uh, well, s sort of more armor than this vehicle so I'm gonna also fight this 1-2v1 or 1v2 now I'm gonna try to side scrape off this now because the KV-1S doesn't really have a lot of penetration, it has 400 alpha damage though so I'm gonna be very careful but it doesn't have accuracy but it's gonna pen it anyway so that's about the, the quality of armor you can expect from this vehicle which is not a lot here comes the Type 62, which is going to be our doom anyway if he go does come and find me. I'm just going to try to sneak a shot at the Dracula here. And now I should probably have a death sentence on my hands here. Uh, unless that Type is going to get distracted by the hazard, which I hope is going to happen. So I'm going to peek wide here. Take that out. Dracula is a problem, obviously. Um, so I'm going to try and peek him, take him out. KV-1S is going to peek, and he got me. So... Anyway, that's 2,000 damage. So, the, the vehicle works. Uh, it's not terrible. But again, if you got to pay for it, if you've got to invest a significant amount of time for it, it's not going to be worth it. If you like the aesthetics of it, then sure, go for it. It looks nice. But in terms of gameplay, in terms of, is the vehicle good? I put it down to, it's good enough to not be shit.